Hi folks, Andrew here with Bob's to see this video, and I'm here with Kurt today, and he's guest number one on getting to know the staff at Bob's to see this vineyards. So first of all, Kurt, what is your title and your job here at Bob's to see this? Wow, that's complicated. <laughs> um, title is tasting room manager, uh, and uh, pretty much uh, responsible is have a little bit of uh, involvement in every aspect of the business, uh, other than physically making wine. Uh, I have the pleasure of being able to work with uh, the best winemaker on the planet, Mr. Fred Amos, uh, and uh, just having feedback on, on what our, our, our clientele and our guests are looking for, and, and um, so helping work with some of the, the different wines and, and the blends that are uh, being created, um, I have some involvement in that. Um, as a tasting room manager, there's a lot of aspects to the tasting room that we offer, so um, I have a great team that... Uh, has come, come together that uh, we put to, uh, to take care of our guests and, and offer a unique experience. And so uh, part of my job there is, is not only uh, putting the team together, but kind of coming up with new and creative um, sales ideas to uh, promote the winery and to promote the experience. Uh, have a huge passion for food and wine and the, the art of, of pairing together. So uh, that's always been kind of our focus. Uh, since I got here is being able to, to make sure that we have uh, something that sets ourselves apart from uh, the rest of the valley and the rest of, of uh, our comrades here. Uh, always trying to push the envelope to create um, unique and different uh, food and wine pairing uh, experiences that really uh, can uh, allow the, the art of, of, of food and wine to, to showcase and be creative and have fun with it. So have a, a a lot of my time is, in fo is focused on that aspect, um, as well as marketing and uh, outside sales, restaurants, um, and accounts like that. So pretty much the sales and hospitality aspect is, is my focus. Awesome. Um, so, I mean, question number two then becomes, how did you get here? What, what is your superhero origin story, Kurt? Superhero origin story. How long have you been here? What have you been doing beforehand? Gosh, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> how did I get here? Well, uh, I guess probably I have to start off of uh, graduated from uh, Santa Barbara City College Hotel Restaurant Culinary Program in um, December of 98 and was hired to work with a, a corporate company, a uh, restaurant company uh, that I was with for about 11 years. And uh, at that time, I felt like it was my opportunity to uh, to do something different in the, the industry. Um, working in restaurants for 11 years and managing uh, your life pretty much is all that. And I felt like it was my opportunity that I had uh, achieved and accomplished everything that I wanted to do uh, up until that point and that the next aspect of my career really needed to be still in hospitality, but um, got exposed to wines at a young age and, and took a lot of um, wine, I took a few wine classes in college and, and, and it was time for me to, uh, to take a step. So uh, back in 2010, I started in uh, Santa Barbara, went back to Santa Barbara where I went to school and started working at um, uh, Brander uh, Estate Winery and also Bridalwood Estate Winery. And got some experience working in tasting room there and uh, just kind of uh, soaked in as much of the knowledge I could. And then, um, Late 2012, I uh, had an opportunity to come up here and work with a, a client that I was uh, trying to design a restaurant and vineyard for, and uh, that client seemed to, uh, kind of opportunity fell through, and I uh, really wanted to get back to the Bay Area to, to be uh, able to help uh, some family, uh, my mom, so uh, went to winejobs.com and Craigslist and looked at <laughs> the different wine jobs up in the area. Uh, I had already uh, always knew that Livermore Valley had, had uh, a very rich history of, of wineries, but I didn't know much more uh, about it than, than just knowing that they had one. And so uh, I applied for the job here, and uh, after a few interviews, uh, they had to get a call saying uh, they wanted me to come aboard. So uh, literally January 2nd of 2013 was my first day here, and I've uh, been here uh, ever since. Awesome. Um, we've been trying to hide Panda up until this point, but yeah. I think he's probably just, yeah. probably just hold him. <laughs> oh, 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 you're okay, buddy. So, so my significant other here. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> my lovely dog Panda, and it is his birthday today. He's 10 years old. He's saying hi. So he will be joining us for the rest of this week. <laughs> All right, I have a couple of favorite questions for you, okay? What is your favorite drink? No, 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 so we have to be wine. Doesn't that say we even have to be alcoholic? What do you enjoy drinking? I would have to say my probably favorite thing in the entire world drink-wise is orange juice. And I have to throw out massive props to Whole Foods. They're oh, uh, whole yeah. filtered, uh, cold pressed orange juice is one of the best beverages I think I've ever had. If not one of the greatest just breakfast meals that yeah, I had. So yeah. I'd say orange juice and I have a lot to go back with when I was a kid. I always had orange juice. We always made from concentrate. <laughs> I always had orange <laughs> juice. So I would say orange juice. Um, if it was an alcohol beverage, I'd have to say a glass of wine. Uh, de definitely enjoy a nice, really good beer. Um, but I would say orange juice. Nice, I like that. Yeah, there's always a line at that cold press yes. station. And I'm sure you've seen me come in with my <laughs> seven dollar, <laughs> my seven dollar uh, little bottle of orange juice. <laughs> but it really, honestly, is so much better than the next orange juice you can have. Yeah. That uh, there's a lot of products in, in that you can find that really are, you know, the name of it is giving it more recognition sure. or whatever. Sure. You could throw that on anything. Yeah. And it is so it's much good. better than any other orange juice. It's that good. I, I have to say that's the best ever. Yeah. All right, love it. Um, what's your favorite meal or type of food? You, you can choose either. If I could have one meal, it would be sushi. Sushi. Then cheese. <laughs> then steak. If you could have that into a day where I could have sushi, steak, and cheese, I'd be happy. The sautéed mushrooms on the steak. All right. Sounds delicious. Making my mouth water. What's your favorite type of wine bread? All time favorite uh, one for is Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir, so red wine. What about white? What do you think? Used to be Chardonnay. Okay. Um, and that has a lot to do with uh, my stepmom, uh, uh, huge Chardonnay fan. Chardonnay. And so a lot of the influence of wine at a younger age was being able to, to have Chardonnay. But I would say right now for whites, I would go Iberian and I go Bordello. Bordello, beautiful. Same. We don't make a Pinot Noir here at La Cecitas Vineyards. It's so, sad, it saddens me. Yes. <laughs> so, what is your favorite La Cecitas wine? I think all time favorite is going to have to be Brent's first blend, Crescinius. Mm -hmm. uh, for multiple reasons. One, it was such a hard word to pronounce <laughs> that when we made it, uh, I didn't know if it was going to last because <laughs> I couldn't even hardly pronounce it. Um, but I think that blend in general really has started to. Uh, kind of set the stage for 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 the blends that Brent has created, and um, the base being Tempranillo. I would have to say from this region, Tempranillo would probably be my favorite varietal that we grow here, sure, sure. Um, that we're known for. Um, even though I, I'm a huge fan of you know Malbec and Cap Franc and the Bordeaux, um, the Rhones. Um, and then the, uh, you know, Rhones are great, but really Tempranillo and the Iberian Reds, you know, I, I think uh, Graciano, mm -hmm. um, those, those really have opened my eyes more to uh, kind of the style that I prefer. True. Sure. Um, not only in blends, but in, in standalone. Standalone. Nice. All right. Time to reveal some secrets. Oh, no. <laughs> what is something that people may not know about? And it's a tough one for you because you, you like to share. You like I'm, to be I'm, I'm pretty open. You're pretty open. And, uh, food and sports and wine <laughs> are pretty much. Uh, um, and uh, people obviously know I love music too. What What would be something that people don't know about me? You know, I think right now, uh, hmm, that's a really good thing. I don't know anything that probably wouldn't know about me. Can we come back to that question? We can come back to that question. Uh, but it's not going to be that long. There's only one more question. So right, well, get the yeah. gears thinking. Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just named a couple of things, but what is something you are particularly passionate about outside of the winery? My friends. Your friends. I'm a people person. Got that kind of uh, characteristic, I think, from my mom. And, and if you could say passion, I mean, obviously I have passion for food and wine, but. Uh, I'm just a passionate person in general, and I think people in general to me, uh, I miss 
this being open and <laughs> us having people come in and uh, and seeing people. So I think that for me is is something that I've missed during this time of, of our quarantine and shelter in place is the aspect of not being able to see people uh, on a on a weekend basis and how much I miss the involvement of, of people yeah. and people that you uh, that I've met here at the winery that have become a part of my life. Um, and that's a very unique aspect of our job is being able to connect with people, not going in an office, but, mm -hmm. but having people uh, in the area that you've come close to knowing and they can become part of your family. Yeah, yeah. I think you're also pretty passionate about your new smoker. Yeah, I like, I like my new barbecue uh, smoker. I'm, I'm going to come in one day and you're going to tell me you tried to smoke ravioli or... I have not attempted that, but that, that could be a possibility. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have uh, used... I think I met 23 times in the last month and a half. So I smoke three to four times a week. Um, and once you get something like that uh, and find that the... the I don't know, the, the fun in, in just doing it, and then you get the reward of eating it, um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's addicting. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that on it. All right, Kurt, well, thank you. Um, you're putting Panda to sleep, so, I mean, maybe our audience is uh, feeling a little tired, too. <laughs> hey, it's his birthday, man. We haven't decided what he's gonna have for his birthday dinner. It's probably gonna be a filet mignon. <laughs> Nice. I like some it. pepperoni treats <laughs> and one hell of a one. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, folks, it's been Andrew and Kurt with Las Vegas Vineyards. Until next time, we'll have another staff member on where you get to learn all about them. Stay safe. See you later. Thank you.